can get to Vasit's kind. Beverly Hersko, in memory of her mother, Chayadova, Vas Nissen, a day of learning at today's 17th. Today's the 18th. Today's the 18th. Fred and Sharon Lisker, in memory of his father, Menachem Mendel Ben Yitzchak, B. Weirden, in memory of her husband, Eliezer Ben Shlomo Halevi, and her aunt, Hannah Vasav Okay, I have no idea where you're up to, and it's very late. So I'm going to just, we're discussing. The general overall discussion had been mitzvah sesha has mangrama and mitzvah sesha lo has mangrama. Mitzvah sesha has mangrama apply only to males. Mitzvah sesha lo has mangrama apply only to females. That's the general rule. But then we had a bunch of rules where men are affected by them and women are not. And they're not mitzvah. They're not uh, they're, uh, they're Asman Grama. So one of them were a series of sukkim that Kohen, Kohanim cannot cut their payas or this part of the head. They cannot trim their beards. Uh, and and the psukim are essentially talking about with the cutting of, the, and you're not allowed to cut yourself. Now, these were indications, but non-Jews would, cut, would shave the front of their head or would cut themselves as a sign of mourning. So we globalize those psukim and say it applies also to non-Kahanim. And we continue globalizing, and we say it also applies to non-mourning situations. However, women are not required, if they happen to have chin hairs, to grow a beard. And women are permitted to style their heads. And even if they take off what we would call the payas, I, I happen to have some over uh -huh. here. Okay. And then we got to cutting, and another pasuk says scratching. That a real problem is sure. that the cutting and the scratching are separated in the pasuk, and the cut and the head. In other words, the pasuk has to be twisted out of all recognition in order to handle how it applies to women and to men, blah blah blah. So, so women can get tattoos. That's no, no, no. Okay. Except for a little heart. <laughs> All right. So, and then we had the issue of you're not allowed to scratch yourself and you're not allowed to cut yourself. So Rashi, what? No, no, no. A scratch yourself to make a, not, not to scratch an itch, but you know, sometimes you scratch yourself and you actually make a wound. So Rashi explains that scratch is with your fingernails and cut is with an implement. Okay, so now we'll just go. Kasava Isi. What? Where are you? Oh, I'm on the very last line of Lamed He. Kasava Isi Sarita. The Gedida, scratching and slashing, uh, uh, they're the same thing. So that makes it a little easier because those words are separated by other words in the Pasuk. So the Pasuk is less complicated, less uh, twisting around. Nevertheless, you're twisting the, it around. Now, we're going to go through as much as we can, that Abaya and Rava, both Paskin like Issy, that women are not obligated to keep this part of the hair long and they're not obligated to grow a beard. If they have chin hairs, they can pluck them out or cut them off, etc. But they use a different methodology, each one. Each has a different Messiah why that's true. So we're going to go through first Abaya. It's a long piece. And then we're going to do what, Rava. And then we're going to ask, why does Rava and Abaya not agree with each other in terms of how to learn it? So we're at the top of Lamed Vav, Aleph. 
Abaya Omer, Haina time at the EC. Here is EC's rationale. The Gomer Korcha Korcha Mi Bnei He learns a Gezeira Shava, the word cut, meaning to cut this part of the head. And there's an, we have here, where within morning or non morning, make Korcha Bnei Aaron. When it comes to Kahanim, they have a separate pasuk that permits cutting their pays. Okay, so he learns korcha, korcha. So that means even men who are not kahanim have to grow payas. Malahal and nashim v'turos. But when it comes to the kahanim where it says b'nei aron, ladies born to kahanim or married to kahanim are allowed to get hairstyles. Okay, afkan nashim v'turos. So when you move it, shift it over to Normal non kahanim males, women are still excluded. The Isvaralan, if we hold the way a bias seems to hold, the Chik Siv Kra, the Kule in Yona Hudiksiv, that the words, the sons of Aaron apply to the whole Parsha there. Nish take Kromine, then the Pusuk, let the Pusuk leave out the Gezerish oven. We still know that women aren't obligated. The lay say the Kalvachomer, because we could build a Kalvachomer. Anna Amina, I would say the Kalvachomer like this. Ma Kahanim, Shariva Behem, a cuss of Mitzvah, you say, Rose. Kahanim have a bunch of extra mitzvahs that other people don't. Omakash and B'nai Aaron, below Benosar, and that applies to the males of the Kahanim and not the females. Yisrael, Loko, Shekane, so regular Jews who do not have these extra mitzvahs, the same rule should apply, and therefore male. Non Jews can't cut the top right at the front of their head, and they can't cut this part, and they can't uh, shave their beards. The Imlav Gezei Shava, because except for having that Gezei Shava, Avamina, Hefsik, Inyan, we would have had this problem that the Pasuk interrupts itself, Psukim interrupt themselves and talk about. Things that are apply only to men, Kohanim, and then only Kohanim women, and then everybody, it gets complicated. So, Hashtanami, name a Hifsika Indian. So, now that we have the Gesei Shava, let's say that the Torah interrupted itself, and the, Kohan, the rules for male Kohanim should apply taka to female kahanim. So, emishim gezei shava. if we use the gezei shava to exempt co- women who married or born to kahanim, mi boile kiddesanya, then we would still need the gezei shava because we have to use it in the following price. Lo yich yik rechu. That means do not cut the top of your head. Do not shave your skull to make yourself bald. Okay? So I might think that if you've got some weird hairstyle where you shave over here and you shave over here and you shave over here, you shave at multiple places on your head. Because it only says it once in the Torah, that you could make as many little shavings on your head as you want, and it only costs you one set of malchus. So if you really want to look like a basketball player or something, maybe it's worth getting one set of malchus. So Talmud Leimer, Korcho. It says it, the Pasuk says, Korcha again. L'chayev al kol achas va'achas. You can't get away with only one set of malkas. They count the, the bald spots you made on your head, and they give you malkas for each one. Okay. 
Barosham. Why does the Torah have the extra word Barosham? Ma Talmud Loimer, what does that add? Lefishanema lo sis goidu velo tashimu korcha bene nesem lames. Pasuk says, don't cut yourself, don't make a bald spot. And, and, and that's between your eyes. So, I might think that you're only obligated if you shave the place where you'd put fill, and we're going to find out. That the, immediately ab- above your eyes, like where your nose is, you, co- you, you shave that spot. Maybe that's the only place that you'd get malchus. I might think it's only between the eyes. How do we know if you do it anywhere else in your head? It's no good either. Talmud Lomar Beroisham. Pasuk has this extra word on your head. So that word isn't needed for the understanding. So that word brings other spots are just as bad. Lachayev al Rosh. Me, Ben, and Nayim to make you just as liable on the rest of your head, Kabain and Nayim, as between your eyes. Okay. The Ainla El Kahanim. But so far, these Pusukim are referring specifically to Kahanim. Should Riva Behem a Kasiv Mitzvah Yuseros, and we'll just say, that these re- rules are up among the extra rules that go on to Kahanim that other people don't have. Yisrael Menalon, how do I know regular Jews can't shave their heads? Okay. Nemer Khan Korcha, it says in the Parsha regarding Kahanim Korcha. Avinemer uh, Lahalan Korcha, and there's another Pasuk referring to everybody. Also, Korcha, not to cut or shave it. Ma kan chayev al kol Korcha. The Korcha over there by the Kohen, he can't shave fancy designs and make bold spots in very places on his head. Chayev al arosh b'kain hanayim. Same rules for the rest of the head is on the head. Af lahalan, here also by non kahanim, Chayav al kol korcha the korcha is obligated chatis for each bold spot he makes. Chayav al harosh because of his chayav on his head, mi ben enayim just like he would be chayav between the eyes. Umal halan al meis and over there when it talks about a regular Jew, it's talking about mourning. Afkan al so too. The prohibition, uh, this is a, a supposition. The prohibition would only apply for dead people. So the Gezei Shava teaches n- not many spots, but we're still stuck with dead people. In Cain, Kasev Krokorach. If the Pasuk was only talking about dead people, in other words, about doing these things as a sign of mourning. So they could use the word Korach to cut, to, to remove the hair. But why does it have the extra hay? My Korach, Shmat Minot, Arte. We learn because of the extra hay, we've done this other times. We learn more than one rule. This applies to when mourning and it applies to when not mourning. Now, Rava Omar, now this is another way of learning the whole thing up, but we still agree with Isa. Rava Omar, high in the time of the Isi, this is what Isi's, what his reasoning was. The Yalif, Fene, Nayim, Mitfilin. We learned the concept of the location of Bene Nayim over here to Tfilin. Okay, and we say, since we're making, we're defining the place you're not allowed to shave is the place where your tefillin are going to rest. That doesn't mean you don't have to put tefillin when you go bald. 
This is when you do it, not when God do it. Okay. So Malahan and Nashim Baturas, ladies, don't have to put on, not allowed to put on Tfilin. Afghan Nashim Baturas, so too, since we now made a Gezerah Shava to Tfilin. So now we can learn that the shaving the front of the head or the sides of the head, are, since we relate it to Tfilin, that that's how women are exempt. But Rabbah, my time, Allah, Amr, Kabaya. Why doesn't Rabbah use Rabbah's series of Gezerah Shabbos and Kal V'chaymers? Korach, Korcha, Losh, Mash, Malay. He doesn't darshan the difference between a word with a hay and a word without a hay. Okay, that's not important to him. V'baya, my time, Allah, Amr, Kabaya. So why doesn't Rabbah agree with Rabbah? Amr Lach, he would tell you, Tfilin, Gufaihu, Mehacha Gamar Lach. You have to use the Gezei Rishava by Tfilin for a, uh, to, okay, Malahalan, Makam, Sha'isim, Korcha, Begovo'a, Shel Rosh. The place that you're not allowed to cut is on the upper portion of the head, which is where hair usually grows until you get old enough to go bald. Okay. So, that's where you put the tefillin. So, you can't learn two things from that same Gezerah Shav, according to Abai. Obey Abai, Obey Rava Hai. Bonim atem my So what do they do with the phrase "You are children" or "You are sons of the rabbinish Shalila"? We need that for a very unique case. We need that to say basically that God still loves us even if we mess up. Hi, my boy, the Katanya. We need that for the following brisa. Bonim atem lashem lelo kechem, you are children of God, your father. Bizman sha'atem nohagim minhag bonim atem keruyim bonim. When you behave the way God wants you to behave, then you are called children of Hashem. Ein atem nohagim minhag bonim. But when you do not behave the way God wants, in the way of ma manner that a obedient child behaves to his parent, then maybe God's not going to think of us as his sons. So, that's what Rabbi Yehuda said. Rabbi Meir, and Meir says, Ben kachu, ben kachatem keruyim bonim. You can be good or you can be bad, and God still calls you his children. Shinema, because of a pasuk. Banim sakalim hema. They are stupid kids. Venemer banim la uman bom. And another pasuk says they're kids that aren't loyal. The Omer Zera Mereim, you are the Tadi. Descendants of evil people. Banim machishim. People, uh, children who are corrupt. But it still uses banim in each phrase. The Yomar of Hoya B'makam Asher Yomar Lehem Lo Ami Atem. The Pasuk says, instead of God saying, you're not my people anymore, Yeomar, God still will say lahem to them, b'nei keil chai. You're still children of the living God. So this is a very, especially in this period of Tekufa, where we're looking for tshuva, we want to be closer to Hashem. It's very reassuring that God still thinks of us as children. Im kabonim, im kabodim. Okay, so now, my the Omer. Now, Rabbi Akiva gave four psukim over here. 
He only needed to do one. Why did he dray on and on and on with the different psukim? My v'yaimer. Why does Rebbe keep Rebbe Mayor keep going and say v'yaimer? He tame sivlehu mikre ban b'nei. If you say that just foolishness, so God overlooks it and still calls you children. Ki lespo hamenu saihu lo mikre b'nei. But if they're disloyal which is worse than foolish, maybe God would no longer call them children. And then it says, children who are disloyal, even disloyal children is still called children. But if we go so far as to worship idols, then maybe God wouldn't call us children anymore. The children of evil ones, Bonim. Mashchisim, children who are corrupt, and it keeps using the word children. Okay? B'nai ma'alia lo mi'ikru. So maybe God will never call us good children anymore, elevated children anymore. Maybe we'll be permanently damaging our relationship with the Rabbi Nishalayalam, Tashma, come and learn. The Yomer, it says, God will not say, Lo, Amiyatem, won't say, You've messed up so badly, you're no longer my people. Yeomar Lehem, he will rather say to them, B'nai Kael Choy, the children of the living God. Okay, the next Mishnah. What, what is the living God? What is that? That it's always permanent. I mean, he is the living God. It's a pasuk. Okay. Now we're going to go into another area where it's not a mitzvah seshes mangrama. It's not a, 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 and yet women are exempt. Okay. The first one, there's a smach like it. It's possible that women were allowed to do smicha in a different way. They couldn't put their whole weight on it, but maybe they could lean on the animal. That's for another time. Ha le- le- leaning on an animal with all your weight, just before it's shechted. The owner of the animal does smicha. Ha tenufos, the concept, certain kabanos are weighed before as part of the process. Okay? Ha ha goshos, bringing the animal, the the offering, the mincha, toward the base of mikta, towards the mishkan, and putting the kmitza on the mishkan and burning it. That's a third thing that in most cases we'll find women aren't involved. Ha kmitzos, the kohen taking the handful of mincha that gets burned. Ha kitaros. The burning of that kamita and the burning of parts or all, depending on the korban of the animal. Hamalikas, the kohain, when he kills a bird offering, uses his right hand thumbnail and pierces through the bird's spine. That's malika. Hakabalas, capturing the blood of an animal in a bucket or a kli, a kli kodesh, a, a container, when to, to, get, to get a hold, when you slit the animal's throat. Okay, hazaos, sprinkling the blood on the mizbeach, nohagim, banashim, below banashim, all these are apply only to men and not to women. Now, some of them were Non Kahanim like the Smicha and the rest were for by Kahanim. Okay? Chutz, with, with two exceptions. Mincha Soita, 
the woman does do the waving with the mincha saita and the and nazira, the mincha that a lady nazir would bring, ashen minifais. That those two kurbanos uniquely women get to wave. Okay, smichas the leaning on the animal, siv devar el bnei Yisrael the somach. So he tell the the sons of Israel lean on the animal, bnei Yisrael simchin v'ein bnei Yisrael samchos. That we use the bnei as a as a miut that it. Limits it to males only. Hatanufos, the waving is only men. Deber al bnei Yisrael, the heinif. Similarly, bnei Yisrael minifin, the ein bnei Yisrael minifos. The men wave, the women don't wave. Okay. Vahagashos, bringing the mincha close to the altar, dixiv. Zeis Tyrus Amincha Hakare Vata Bene Aaron, the sons of Aaron bring the Mincha close to the altar. Bene Aaron, the Nobinois Aaron, only the males, not the female Kahana. Kamitsos, the act of doing Kamitsa, Dixiv, the Hevia, Bene Aaron, the Kamitz. They should bring the mincha to a son of Aaron, and he should do kamitsa. And b'nei Aaron, b'lo b'nei Aaron. Again, it's the boys, not the girls. Hakitaros, burning the animals on the mizbeach is only by men. Dechiv hiktoru also b'nei Aaron. Bring burn the animals, the sons of Aaron, B'nai Aaron, the B'nai Aaron, the males, not the females. Hamalikos, doing Malika on the birds. Dixiv, Umolach, the Hektir, the Kohen should do Malika and then burn the bird. So Ashkis, Malika, Lehektira, we already learned that the burning has to be a male. So we do this Gezeira Shava, uh, this Hekesh rather, and do the bird, the, 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 the piercing of the neck of the bird has to be a male also. Hakabalos, catching the blood in a basin. Dixiv, the Hikrivu B'nai Aaron, the, the sons of Aaron should bring it near. The Omer Mar, turn the page. Hektiro Zukabalas Adam. The it there is the caught blood. So if you have, and that, that's the male. Okay. The Hazais, the spritzing of the blood. Hazais, the Heka. What spritzing are we talking about? This is a little deviation from the before. So there are various other kinds of Kabanos where the outer altar is not involved, like this apart. Helam Dover, where the blood is spritzed on the curtain and so on. Hazos Heka, what spritzing are we talking about here? E the para, if we're talking about the spritz, the para duma, then it norm, then nobody, no kahan can do it. It's not done in the bismesa vinta. Elezek Suva, it's written there, Eli Elazar, who was the Kohen Gadol at his time. So that means it's always got to be the Kohen Gadol. In the, the Nim, it, the, if we're talking about the Parhelam Dover, HaKohen HaMashiach, that again has to be only the Kohen Gadol. So obviously excludes women. Ela Hazos to Ben Oif. We're talking here about the spritzing of the bird blood, which isn't really spritzed. You sort of squeeze the bird against the side of the mizbeach after you do the malika. Okay, the asya mikalvachomer viven sain. So we learn that as a kalvachomer from the offerings of a sheep. Ma ben son shalo kavalo kohen shechito so. Just as you do not have to have a kohen do the shechita. 
But you do need a Kohen for the next steps up to including the spritzing. Ben of Shekavalo Kohen Lamelitha. How much more so if the Kohen has to do the killing of the bird? That the bird, the, the blood spritzing has to be done by a Kohen. Um, what about excluding the women except for waving the, the Sota and the Nazira? Omer le Rebbe Lazar Rebbe Yeshua de Rebbe de Dore. Rebbe Lazar said to the person named Yehoshua who was his contemporary, Lo Tesev Akorach al Amurasli. Do not literally sit on your feet. In other words, don't rest until uh, the Shmaita, until you explain this to me. Menayim lemenicha soita shetuuna tenufa. How do I know in the first place that the mincha of a sota requires wave? So the Gemara says, Minalan, how do you know that? Gufaksiv, it's written played out in a puzzle. Hey, Nif es ha-mincha. Wave the woman's court, the woman's mincha. Ella, what he was really asking is, Tenufa bailim minayan, minalan. How do we know the general rule that it's the owner that does the waving of a korban and the sota simply fits that general rule. Asya yad yad mishlamim. We make a hey, we make a gezeira shava to the word yad when it in shlamim, and the word yad in the sota sivhacha v'lakacha kohen miyad haisha that says there that the kohen takes the mincha from the woman's hand. V'ksivhasam by the shlamim. Yadav Tivienna, with his hand, he should bring it to the Kohen. And the Pasuk goes on to do the Tanufa. Ma Khan Kohen, Aflahal and Kohen. In the first case, meaning the Sota, the Kohen is involved in the waving. And in the Shlamim, the Kohen is also involved in the waving. Malahal and Bailim, just as in the Shlamim case. The man is involved in that owns that shlomim is involved in the waving. Afkan bailim here too in the woman's case. It also is the both are involved. Okay, so how do you do the waving if two people are involved? Kohen machnis yodu tachas yad bailim umeni. The kohen puts his hands under the hands of the korban's owner. And they wave it together. Okay, Ashbechan Saita. So, okay, you've shown me why the Sota gets waved. Nazira Minolan, how do we know? Yeah, a woman has to wave the Nazir carbon for Nazira's. Asya Kaf Kaf Misaita. The word Kaf, palm of the hand, is used in the Saita Parsha. And the word kaf is used in the mincha of an azira parsha. So kaf kaf means you do it the same way in both cases. We'll do the Mishnah tomorrow. Sorry, it's past 9.30. You're sorry it's past 9.30? Yeah. I, was trying, I went as fast as I could to try and get done by 9.30. Great. But it Thank was a long much. stop and I couldn't get it in. Thank you. We appreciate your we appreciation is welcome, but don't go overboard. As an account, I depreciate it. Okay, then you can depreciate my giving the daf. I'm speaking of which, this uh, next Sunday will be my last day of giving the daf. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm going away. Where are you going? Oh, I'm did, going north. Did you apply for? Uh, I applied visa? for a visa. For visa? Yes. No, we're going, you know, just, uh, right after Yom Kippur, we're leaving. Uh, but just anybody for here? What? Anybody going I haven't the vaguest idea. No, because Green is coming back after.
I think Ruben is here, but I don't know if he wants to do it. I mean, Ruben has got issues. I mean, I'm in, a, in addition to his children, he has other yeah. issues. Ah, whoa. You're a poet pastor. Uh, yeah. Poet pastor is an awful poet. Okay, Melvin. Melvin, yeah. you want to go to Lax and Bagels? Uh, anybody uh, wants to come to Lax and Bagels? I'm treated. Yeah, okay. Careful what you say, people may. <laughs> Take you up on it. You didn't say when. 